All right, so here we are. We're going to be solving some quadratics today. Um, now, first, I like to always cover the big picture because why? Why do we even have a plan? Why do we deal with this at all? So a couple things. Um, in algebra, we basically have two plans, right? We're able to solve something like 2x squared. Oops, sorry, put a squared. We're able to solve something like 2x plus 5 equals... 3x minus 2x plus 1 minus 10. We're able to solve something like that because we just put all our x's on one side. Whoa, that's x's on one side equal to our numbers on the other side. And then we just divide by the number of x's. So if this was 3x, we divide by 3. And then we're able to get x equals a number. All right? That's, that's our big plan so far. But the only reason that works is because we only have two types of things. We put the variable types of things on the left and we scoop them all up into a pile so we have a number of them like eight x's and then on the right we just have numbers and we shove them all together even if it's a decimal like you know 8.1 it's still a single number and then you just divide and if i had eight x's equals 8.1 divide by eight and one x equals something now when we introduce x squared we now have three different types of terms we have x squareds we have x's and we have numbers there's no way to put one type on the left one type on the right and stop instead you'll always have two different things on one side right so for example here if i do uh let's do just the x's on one side well then the x squareds end up on the right and so your answer x equals if you use your old plan gets you something written in terms of x squareds and numbers now, that's not helpful that's like saying the car is car like to define it you can't define x in terms of x you want to find out what number it's equal to uh, over on the right i said well let's see if we just solve for the x squared here well we move the x's to the other side by subtracting and x squared we take the square root so x is equal to and again there's still x's there because there's two different types of things so this is the whole reason we have a plan our old strategy doesn't work when we have three or more unlike terms Two unlike terms, it works, even if, and this is something uh, that will come up kind of as a shortcut, if we have just x squareds and numbers, we can actually use our old plan. We just put the numbers on one side, the x squareds on the other, then we divide by 2, divide by 2, x squared is negative 5 over 2, we square root both sides, and that's the answer. Now, in this case, um, you can't take the square root of a negative, or at least not at our level, it's an imaginary number, we'll get to that later. But... The big idea is if there's only two types of terms, you can actually use the old plan. But when there's x squareds, x's, and numbers, you can't use the old plan. Okay, so we come up with a new plan. And our new plan uses this really interesting property, which is if two things multiplied together equals zero, the only way that's possible is if one of them is zero. You can't have a half times three equal to zero. You can't have negative 8 times 57 equal to zero. The only way a product, two numbers multiplied together, equals zero is if one of them is zero. So we know either a is zero or b is zero. And we use that property to solve all of our other equations in algebra. About half the year, using our straightforward linear plan, right? Everything on the left, or, I mean, all the variables on the left, all the numbers on the right, divide, done. Now we say, let's use this plan that if two things multiply to get zero, so the way we do that is our new plan is two or three steps, but really two important ones is we move everything to one side so it's equal to zero, and then step two is we factor it. So what we end up getting is something like move it all to one side, you know, something x squared plus something plus something equals zero. Factor it, and now we have a product that's not real, right? I just made this up, equals zero. Now we have a product, right? Now we have a parentheses times a parentheses equal to zero. So our third step then, now that we, we know how to factor from before, is we just say, well, one of these two parentheses has to be zero then. If parentheses times parentheses, if our factored form multiplies to make zero, then one of them's got to be zero. Okay, so move everything to one side. That's step one. Factor is step two. And then if you're able to factor, 
we just set each one equal to zero. We say, well, either this one's zero, or we literally write the word or this one's zero. And then you just solve each one of those like, like it were a linear equation. So subtract three, subtract three, x equals negative three. That's one answer. Or second answer, minus one, two x is negative one, divide by two, divide by two, x is negative one half. Okay, so that's our big new plan. Now we have a backup. Let's say we put everything onto one side and we try to factor it, but we can't. Maybe you forgot how to factor, or maybe it's just not possible, right? It's possible to have a prime thing, just like it's possible to have a number like 37 that's a bigger number, but it's prime. It can't be factored, right? 36 can, 38 can, but 37 is prime. It's okay to have a big thing that's prime. So if you try and factor it and you can't, we have a backup, and that's just plug it into the quadratic equation. If you have a quadratic formula, if you put everything on one side, it will always look like this, although one of these might be gone, right? I might not have any x's left. That still means we have ax squared plus bx plus zero. It's just that b is zero, right? So it's okay if one of them's missing. We just go in and we say plus zero x. And so b is zero. Okay, now I'll go back here and write b. And then what you do is you take each coefficient, the number next to that variable in the first two, and then the number by itself on the third one. And we just plug them into this formula and we get our answer. Not very elegant. In general, we'll be doing um, factoring and saying each factor is zero more often. But the quadratic formula will always work. It will always get you an answer. What I see, though, is I see most people um, making a lot of little arithmetic mistakes. Uh, really common is they either mess up this negative sign, like minus, and that A or C is negative, and they forget that negative times negative is positive, or this part of the fraction bar disappears, or they only cancel the 2A with uh, the negative B or with the square root instead of dividing both by 2A. So there's some common mistakes that arise, but the big thing is just I would prefer you solve by factoring on most all problems, and when when that's not possible, you can use the quadratic formula as a backup, okay? But just as a backup. All right, so here we go. I'm going to walk you through two. I'm going to say first I'm going to solve by factoring. Then I'm going to solve by using the quadratic formula. And after I just go through the walkthrough, I won't be writing much on here. Then after that, I'll just solve a bunch, you know, just, you know, here's one, two, three, so you can kind of get some practice. Okay, so walk through number one here, solve by factoring. Now, the thing I wrote here in green is as soon as I see two things, the word solve, because if it asks a factor, that's a totally different question. There's no equal sign. But if it says solve and I see an x squared, as soon as I see that x squared, I go ding, ding, ding. I'm using my other plan, not my linear plan, not my half, first half of algebra. I'm using my second half of algebra other plan, which is three steps. Move everything to one side equal to zero, all right? That's what I wrote right here. So everything to one side equal to zero is step one. So I do that by subtraction. I say, let's get rid of the x squared, subtract x squared. Let's add x to both sides, of course. So I subtract x squared, I added x, and then I'm going to subtract the five from both sides. So I subtracted it over here. So now the entire right side is gone, and that becomes zero. All right, so on the left, what's left over is x, 15x squared, positive x, minus 2. And I made a note here, uh, if you're going to factor this, the first term has to be positive. So when choosing to put it all on the left or all on the right equal to 0, I always say um, choose the side where the x squared term is positive. So if there's more x squareds on the left, then let's move it all over here. But if this was, say, like, say this was 20x squared, then I'd move it all to the right. So subtracting 16, I'd be left over with a positive 4x squared on the right. So I choose whichever side makes my first term positive. Now, the quadratic formula, it's okay if the first one's negative. But to factor, you can't have the first one being negative. So if it is negative, we'd have to then divide by a negative or multiply by a negative or factor out. And we don't want an extra step. So we move it all to one side equals zero. That's step one. Now step two is 
factor. That's what we just did in our last video. That was the last lesson. Hopefully you're good at this. Um, I use the Xbox method. I have it shown here and I'll walk you through it um, later when I'm doing problems. But the big idea is I set up so everything written in pink here. Whoa, I'm doing a race. <laughs> um, everything written in pink here was just set up. Literally read this and just set this up. The green is what I was actually figuring out. Is I'd say, okay, so what has a product of negative 30 and a sum of positive 1, the product coming from the first and last term multiplied together, and the sum being the middle term, positive 1. So I go, oh, playing with guess and check, or I can have a system. Uh, for me, I like to go 1 times 30, 2 times what equals 30, 3 times what equals 30, uh, 4 doesn't work, 5 times, six, and I make a little list. For me, that helps, but you can do whatever you want. Guess and check is okay, too. Um, I would say that's not the best method, but it's okay. All right? Then I take those two values, I place them in my box that I set up, and that's how my middle term split. So I see a positive x, but actually the way it came to me was 15x squared minus 5x plus 6x. The order of those two middle terms doesn't matter. Minus 2 equals 0, and now I can finish. That's what it was before they got added together. So I just take out the GCF of this, 5x, the GCF of this, 2, the GCF of this, negative 1, GCF of this, 3, and so there I go. I got my factored version. Now I still keep the equals at 0. This is still an equation. I'm solving this. I have one more step. So step one, everything to one side equals zero with the first term positive. Step two, factor it. And last step, three, since we know that parentheses times parentheses equals zero is only possible if one of the parentheses is equal to zero, I go down here and I literally say either the first parentheses is zero or the second parentheses is zero. Right? Literally, either this thing that's written in parentheses is equal to zero, or this thing written in parentheses is equal to zero. And then I solve it, just like a normal old algebra problem, and I get two answers. And in general, any x to the second power is going to have at most two answers. Both answers might be the same number, like x equals 3 or x equals 3. So instead of listing it twice, we'd say, oh, this one only has one answer. Or it might be impossible. We'll get to those later on. Um, so it could have two answers, or one or zero. Now, in general polynomials, x to the seventh power, an equation with that in it, would have seven possible answers, or less, right? So x squared, in general, have two answers, or less. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually, oh, I want to highlight one thing here. Um, a common mistake is people mixing up, whether the question's asking you to uh, solve or factor. So take a sip of water. So when it says solve, when you read solve on a problem, they're asking you for numbers. X equals a number. That's what solve is asking for. What solutions are there to this equation? When it says factor, it just wants you to take something like 6 and say 6 is the same as 2 times 3. So you're saying the product 2 times 3 is the same as that original thing you gave me. So when we factor a quadratic, we get something like this, parentheses times parentheses. Okay, so factor and solve, totally different questions. And the reason they're different is when I say factor, there's no equal sign. There's no possible way to move everything to one side equals zero. You have no idea what this is equal to. Instead, we're just practicing factoring what you read through it. And so you use the Xbox method, and you say, after the Xbox method, this is what I got. Stop. Over here where it says solve, that's just a step in my process. I move everything to get to one side so it's equal to zero. Then I factor it, and a middle step in this problem will be x uh, minus 2 times x minus 3 equals zero. And then I have to go a step further. It wants me to solve. I have an equals to zero. There are values that make this true and values that make this false. Over here... If I plug in 1, I'll get a number. If I plug in 10, I'll get a number. But there's no equal sign to check whether that's a solution or not. It's just if I plug in 1, I get something. If I plug in 2, I get something. So factoring is different than solving and finding the 
two answers that make that true. Okay, anyways, let's go walk through two. So quadratic formula, not very uh, interesting. You just simply say, I move everything to one side. Since there were more x squared on the right, and again, the signal that I knew what strategy to use is it says solve, and I go, ooh, an x squared and the word solve. So I know everything to one side equals zero. Factor if I can. If I can, set them equal to zero. If I can't, quadratic formula. So three steps. So first step, <clears throat> without knowing if I can factor it or not, first step is move it all to one side. I choose the side where the x squared will be positive, so everything goes to this side. I have minus x squared, minus x, minus 1 from both sides. <clears throat> so now that it's all on one side equals 0, step 2 is factor if possible. No, I'm not going to walk through why it's impossible, but this one couldn't be factored. We're done. Can't be factored. So then, step 3, if we can't factor it, is we just plug it into the formula. So in this case, a is 2, b is include the sign, negative 3, C is include the sign, negative 4. Plugging it in, we just take this, and I write empty parentheses everywhere where there used to be a letter. So B becomes empty parentheses, B. That way you don't make negative mistakes. A, C, A. And then what I do is after I go back, after all those are blank, then I go in and write in what is my A, what is my B, and my C in each of the empty parentheses. And then you just go through and simplify. This is as far as you get. Since we don't have a calculator for semester, you don't plug this in and get a decimal approximation. Also, this can't be simplified. And even if it could, we're not going to talk till semester two how to simplify radicals. But you can separate this into two answers. It's absolutely OK to say, here are both of my answers. Or you say, either it's 3 plus square root 41 over 4, or it's 3 minus. And that's what the plus or minus sign really means here, is it means two separate equations, totally separate. It's either 3 plus that over 4 or 3 minus that over 4. It's just a shorthand way to write both at the same time. Like x could be positive or negative 2 is the same as saying x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. So it's a shorthand way to write two things at the same time. Okay. So let's just scribble that out really quick. Let's go down here and actually do some problems together. Okay, so the first one, uh, the first two steps are done for you. It says solve by factoring. So it's already on one side equal to zero. It's already factored. So if I know that two parentheses multiply to make zero, that tells me that either the first parenthesis equals zero or the second one equals zero. Right? Literally, what is in the parentheses is 0, or what is in the other parentheses is 0. And then you solve. So we get that either x equals negative 5, or minus 1 minus 1, 4x is negative 1, divide by 4, x is negative 1 fourth. So one of those two must be true. All right, so now let's actually do the whole problem. So over here, um, let's keep it in green. I'm going to make this a little thinner. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so let's do this. We've got, oh, see, I see solve and I see an x squared or a k squared. So immediately I know I'm using my move to one side plan. So the x squareds or k squareds are already on the left and they're positive. And there's none other. So I'm going to move the 72 to the other side. So now I've got 6k squared plus 24k minus 72 equals 0. Great. Okay, so step one's done. Now I'm on step two. I just got to factor. And factoring remembers two steps. One, we pull out anything they have in common. And two, we use the Xbox method. So step one, let's see what they have in common. Well, they're all even, so I can pull out a two. They're all divisible by three, but the biggest thing that goes into all of them is a six. Now you have two options here. You could either pull out the six and leave it as k squared plus 4k minus 12 equals zero, or since this is an equation, you could just divide both sides by 6, and you get k squared plus 4k minus 12 equals 0. So that's the method I'm going to use from now on. But I just one time want to show you what it looks like to keep um, the 6 there. So either way, you get the same quadratic inside the parentheses or by itself. 
So now I'm going to factor. Okay, so my product is first times last. My sum is the middle term. And in my box goes my whole first term and my whole last term. And so what I'm looking for here is oh, two numbers that do that. Oh, that's going to be a positive 6 and a negative 2. Those add to positive 4, multiply to negative 2. So I'm going to go here. So go, that's positive 6. Whoops, I want to write next k and negative 2k. So now pulling out the GCF, this is keep the sign of the first box. They have a 2 in common. Keep the sign of the first box. They have k in common. k in common. 6 in common. I just double check that those multiply. So negative 2 times 6, yes. Negative 12. k times 6, yes. Six, and so on and so forth. So it does work. So now what I get is either, depending on whether the 6 is still there or not, I get 6 times k minus 2 times k plus 6 equals 0. Or if I divided the 6 out, I just get k minus 2 times k plus 6 Oops. equals 0. So now if a product is equal to 0, I know one of these things is equal to 0. So in either case, I'm going to say, well, either, whoa, that's a neon color. So it just hurt my eyes here. Let's do blue. So I know either k minus 2 is 0 or k plus 6 is 0. Okay, so just adding 2, I get k is 2. Great. Or, subtracting 6, k is negative 6. Okay, and you could just plug these into the original equation and see if they work. Plug in negative 6 for k. If it works, it is a correct solution. Plug in 2. If it works, it's a correct solution. All right, so here's the reason I kept the 6. Is over here, that's all you'd get. You'd get either k equals 2 or k equals negative 6. But a lot of people say, why don't you check this? Well, actually, you're right, we should. So we have a product of three things equaling 0. So we need to check if any of them are 0. So it's either k plus 6 is 0, we got that, or k minus 2 is 0, got that, or 6 equals 0. And then whenever we're solving an equation, we get 6 equals 0, we would just say, oh, yeah, that's no solution. There's no k that makes 6 equal to 0. So we don't need to include that because that doesn't give us a valid solution. So our only possible solutions are k is 2 or k is negative 6, which is what we expect, two answers for a quadratic. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more. So I'm going to go a little more quickly now. Okay, so I'm going to see it, solve a quadratic, move it all to one side. This is the side where my x squared is positive. So I subtract 72 from both sides. I add 6n to both sides. So I get 6n squared plus 6n minus 72 equals 0. I notice they all have a 6 in common. So my first step in factoring is take out what they have in common. So this was step 1. Okay, step 2 is factor. So first things first, I'll switch colors maybe for step 2. Divide it all by 6, both sides of the equation n squared plus n minus 12 equals 0. x box, that is, ooh, let's see, we put on top a negative 12, on bottom a positive 1. Over here, a first term, uh, it's an n squared, because we're factoring this, not the original. My n squared, a negative 12. So switching colors again, let's go, we get uh, hmm, oh, a positive 4 and a negative 3. That's what makes that. So we get positive 4n, negative 3n, and what they have in common is an n and a 4, an n and a negative 3. Let me double check. Yep, all that works out. So after step 2, we have n plus 4 times n minus 3 equals 0. And then third step here, let's switch again to pink, is my product equals 0. So either the first thing 0 or the second thing is 0. So we get either n is negative 4 or n is 3. One of those two. Okay, let's do one more problem with factoring, and then we'll do uh, one or two with quadratics, okay? With a quadratic formula, I mean. Okay, so this one, uh, right away, I'm seeing solve an x squared. So I know my three steps, so I'm going to move it all to the side where the x squareds are positive. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 
That gets rid of that. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So I have 5x squared plus 3x minus 14 equals 0. Step 1 done. Okay, step 2 is factor. These have nothing in common. I can tell they have nothing in common because 5 and 3 have nothing in common. And this has no x's. So there's no variables they have in common. There's no numbers they have in common. So step 2, I'm going to go... Uh, product is 5 times negative 14. Well, that's a big one. That's going to be negative 50 and twice and negative 70. And sum is 3. So these are close together numbers. Okay. And then my box. 5x squared. Negative 14. So i got to look for this. So I'm going to use my system now. I'm going to say this is either 1 times 70, 2 times 35, 3 times doesn't work, 4 times doesn't work. 5 times 14, yeah, that was the one we used. 6 times doesn't work. 7 times 10, 8 times doesn't work. 9 times doesn't work. 10 times 7, I'm repeating myself, so I'm done. So I've only got four possibilities here. And I just literally went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until I repeated myself. Or in general, until you get to the square root of 70, which is around 8 point something, right? because it's a little bigger than square root of 64, okay? So I only had to check 9 or 10 things here, and I've got four possibilities. Well, I know the product is negative, so one of these is negative, and one is positive. And when I add a negative and a positive, they cancel. So these will cancel to leave me with a 69, cancel to give me a 33, cancel to give me a 9, and cancel to give me a 3. So it's this one right here. That's my system. So I go, okay, well, there's more positive, so it's a positive 10 and a negative 7, and that one checks out. Okay, so over here, I'm going to add that. I got uh, negative 7x, uh, positive 10x, and then I just pull out what they have in common. So here's a 2, here's an x, here's a 5x, and here's a negative 7. And checking out, all those products work. So after step 2, I have x plus 2 times 5x minus 7 equals 0. And step 3 I'll do in green. Step 3 is either the first thing equals 0 or the second thing equals 0. So 5x minus 7. And then so minus 2 minus 2, we get x equals negative 2. Or, and then we add 7, add 7, shoop, 5x is 7. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 7 fifths. Right? So those are our two answers. So now let's say, oh man, I totally forgot how to factor, or um, you just can't factor a certain problem. We have a backup plan. Okay, this is solve with the quadratic formula. So we could try and factor this, and maybe they even gave us some that factor. And that would be nice, because that means our quadratic formula will spit out answers like x equals 3, or x equals 1 half. Because the general format of things that cannot be factored, the reason we have a quadratic formula is if we can't factor, that general answer is going to look something more like this. Uh, 3 plus or minus square root of 19 over 4. That's kind of the general look. So expect an answer like this, but be pleasantly surprised if it works out nicely. If it works out nicely, that simply means you could have factored it. But quadratic formula totally works. Okay, so let's use the quadratic formula. Follow the same steps. It says solve, and I see a squared. So I move everything to one side. Oh, how nice they did it for us. Okay, step one, done. Step two, since it says to do with the quadratic formula, we are not going to factor. We're going to pretend that we tried and couldn't. And so... Step three, we just plug into our formula. We got x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. is I'm going to take blue, and I'm going to say, well, a is, there's no number there. It's a 1, because if, if it was 0, this wouldn't be there at all. So since it's there and there's no number next to it, we're talking about one of them. And then b is positive 4, c is negative 12, 
So down here, I'm going to say, OK, well, x is equal to, this is literally my answer is negative something plus or minus something squared. And this is just so I don't make any negative mistakes. Minus 4 times something times something all over 2 times something. And then I just take my pink and I put in my numbers. So first, let's put in our a's. a goes here and here. Then let's put in our b's. So 4 at 4. And then let's put in our c, negative 12. So what we get is a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, and I'm going to simplify this, 4 squared is 16. This would be minus, but now it's negative times negative. So this is actually plus uh, 48. So 16 plus 48, that's 50, 64, right? So 64 all over 2. Okay, so this is a good one. This is a good one. So we get negative 8. It is a perfect square, so we don't stop here. If this was the square root of, say, like 63, we're done. We can't go any further than that. But it is a perfect square, so we're going to keep going. So that is 8. Now here's the common mistake. You cannot say this is plus or minus and add negative 4 plus or minus 8 to get plus or minus 4 over 2. And let's look at why. These are two totally separate equations written at the same time. But really, it's saying negative 4. Because here you get this is plus or minus 2. That's what you get as your answer, positive 2 or negative 2. One of those is right, but the other one you made a negative mistake. So it's negative 4 plus 8 over 2. This is one possible answer for x. Or it's x equals negative 4 minus 8 over 2. So here you get positive 4 over 2, which is 2. So x equals 2 is a valid answer. But instead, when you combine these, you added 8 plus negative 4 both times. You never subtracted 8. If you subtract 8, you actually get negative 12 over 2. That's a totally different value. So we get x equals negative 6. So I can tell that I could have factored this, right? I could even work backwards and say I would have gotten x minus 2. So when I plug in 2, that's 0, times x plus 6 equals 0. That's the factored version. I could tell that right now. But just because it worked out nicely, I know I could have factored it. OK, so let's do one more. So this one over here, again, it says solve, and I see a squared. So immediately, I see get everything to one side. Since I'm using the quadratic, it doesn't matter which side. But I still always do the side where x squared is positive. So moving it over, I'm going to go plus 9a on both sides, minus 2 on both sides. So I get 5a squared plus 9a minus 2 equals 0. So my, in another color here, whoa, b, my a is 5, my b is 9, and my c is negative 2. So then I'm going to write out my formula. Again, I have it written right here, but I'm just going to write it out with blanks. I'm going to say x equals negative parentheses plus or minus square root parentheses squared minus 4 times something times something all over 2 times something. And then taking my pink, I'll put it in. So my b, my b, my a, and my a, and my c. All right. So now solving this, this time I'll do it in blue. Now it's to be totally different. Let's go purple. Okay, so we get x equals, here's negative 9, plus or minus, and I'm going to simplify this square root all over 10. Okay, so this one is 81 minus, again, oh, the bell. Again, two negatives there, so that's going to become plus, and then that's 20 times 2, so plus 40, so I get 121. Oh, it's going to work out nicely again. So this is negative 9 plus or minus 11. Again, if this was like square root of 120, yes, that could be simplified. We'll do that later in the year. But for now, you just stop there and you put a box around that and say, those are my two answers. But since it worked out nicely, we're going to keep going. We'll say either it is x equals negative 9 plus 11 over 10 or x equals negative 9 minus 11 over 10. So it's either ooh, 2 
over 10. So either x equals 1 fifth or, and that's negative 20 over 10, x equals negative 2. And those are my two answers. Again, you could just plug those back in and see if they work. All right, hope that was helpful. Enjoy.